Hey everyone, welcome to part 9 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video we will implement attacks in our battle system. So if I select a move, my Pokemon will attack and then the enemy Pokemon will attack back. So if I attack again, you can see that the enemy Pokemon faints once its HP becomes 0. So if you like the series, please consider subscribing to the channel and leave the video a like to help the channel grow. So let's start. So in the previous video, we covered up to move selection. So now when the player chooses a move, we actually need to perform that move. So in the handle move selection, if the Z key is pressed, then first we need to disable the move selector. Then we need to enable the dialog text. And finally, we'll call a coroutine that will perform the move. So let's create this coroutine. So in this coroutine, the player Pokemon will perform the attack or the move and the enemy Pokemon will take a damage from that attack. So first I need a reference to the move that was selected by the player. And we have the index of the selected move in current move. So I'll say moves of current move. So next in the dialog box, we will show that the player Pokemon used this move. So I'll get the name of the player Pokemon. Name is inside the base. Used the name of the move. So if we test this, it'll show Charmander used. The name of the move which is ember in this case so next we need to apply damage to the enemy pokemon so before that i'll just wait for one second after showing the dialogue i can do that by wait for seconds coroutine and next we need our enemy pokemon to take damage so inside our pokemon class We will create a function called take damage and this function will take a reference to the move and a reference to the Pokemon who attacked. So in this function we need to calculate the damage. This is a formula that is used to calculate damage in the Pokemon games. So in Bulbapedia, there's actually a page that explains the formula for calculating damage so i'll put a link to this in the description so that you can read more about this formula so the damage depends upon the level of the attacker the power of the move the attack stat of the attacker and the defense of the current pokemon and we'll also add a random number between 0.85 and 1 so the damage produced by the move is a little different every time so next we need to reduce the damage from the HP and we need to check if HP is less than 0. So if HP is less than 0, it means the Pokemon fainted. So this function returns a boolean which indicates whether the Pokemon fainted or not. So here we can just return true which means the Pokemon fainted. And I'll also set the HP to 0 so that negative HP is not shown in the UI and otherwise I'll just return false specifying the Pokemon did not faint. So let's call this function from the battle system. We should call it on the enemy Pokemon. So this will apply damage to the enemy Pokemon and it will return whether the enemy Pokemon fainted or not. So I'll store it in a boolean variable and if the Pokemon fainted, then we'll show that in the dialog box. Otherwise, we'll make the enemy attack now. So I'll call a coroutine called enemy move. And let's create that coroutine. So here first I'll set the state to enemy move. So I need to add one more thing in the perform player move. 
So during the start of the coroutine, I need to set the state to busy because if the state is in player move, player will still be able to change the value of the current move. This is, so this is why we have an extra state called busy. So in case of our enemy Pokemon, all we have to do is select a random move from the list of the moves that Pokemon has. So inside the Pokemon class, I'll create a function that will return a random move of the Pokemon. So first I'll generate a random number between zero and the length of the move. And then we just have to return the move at that index. So in the battle system, let's call that function to get a random move. And next we need to do the opposite of what we did in the player move function. So I'll just copy this. And I'll change the player unit to enemy unit and vice versa. So first we need to print the name of the enemy Pokemon and the player Pokemon should be taking the damage. And if the player Pokemon faints, we should show its name. And if it did not faint, then we'll go back to the player action. So the player will be able to choose between fight or run again. So by calling the take damage function, we are decreasing the HP of the Pokemon, but we need to also update that value in the UI. So in our battle HUD class, we will create a function to update the HP of the Pokemon. And I'll just copy paste this line. So in the set data function, let's store a reference to the Pokemon class so we can use it here. And let me change the name of the Pokemon variable. So now in the battle system, after calling the take damage function, we just have to call the update HP function also. So I'll say player hurt dot update HP. And inside the player move, I'll call enemy hurt dot update HP. So one mistake I made is in the take damage function to check if the Pokemon fainted. I'm checking if the HP is less than zero. So this should actually be less than or equal to. So let's test the game now. And if I choose an attack, the Bulbasaur will take some damage and it will attack back, which will cause my Pokemon to take some damage too. So let me attack again. And you can see that the Bulbasaur fainted. So the battle is too fast now. So instead of reducing the HP bar all at once, we need to animate that smoothly. So let's do that. So inside the HP bar script, I'll create a coroutine that will set the HP smoothly. So in here, first I'll store the current HP in a variable. And I'll calculate the amount of HP that we have to change. So this is current HP minus new HP. And then we'll create a loop that will run until the difference between the current HP and the new HP is a very small value. In this loop, first I'll reduce the current HP by a small amount. So multiplying the change amount with time dot delta time will only take a small portion of the change amount and we'll set the current HP as the scale of the health bar in the UI and finally I'll just say he'll return null so after reducing the HP by a small amount we will stop the coroutine and continue it in the next frame and finally outside this loop I will set the scale of the help bar to new HP. So now in our battle HUD script, let's call the set HP smooth instead. 
and since this is coroutine I'll add yield return in front of it and the update HP function should also be a coroutine and finally in the battle system we need to add yield return in front of the update HP function okay so let me also do that for the enemy hut dot update HP so now if I test the game you can see that the HP is animating smoothly so right now we are not considering any type advantages in our battle system for example when we attack a grass type Pokemon with a fire type move it should actually deal more damage because the grass type is weak to the fire type so in the next video we will add type advantages into our battle system we will also add critical hits and we'll also add some animations to our pokemon while attacking so if you think these videos are helpful consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like on the video that will really help me a lot so i'll see you in the next video